hello again and thank you for watching um, my video channel um, this video uh, it might be a two-part video uh, you might have already seen the first part and what have you but we're going to be manufacturing today um, a powder flask which is one of these or one of these or one of these and um, these are all available on my website at plantagenetrepros.co.uk we'll put a link down below so if you want to buy one okay so what we're going to be doing um, we're not going to manufacture a, a full powder flask um, the video would be miles too long um, and some of the equipment that we've got if you're, if you're a machinist for making this sort of stuff here then I think you'll know what to do but we're going to concentrate on manufacturing the wooden body which is this bit here and then we'll cons and then we'll cut then we'll put the thing together uh, and we'll show you how it works and what have you so what we'll do i'll zoom in now uh, or i'll zoom in shortly should i say and some of the parts that we've got okay so and obviously the first part that we'll need is, is is a piece of wood to manufacture the wooden body out of and that wood wants to be a fairly hard wearing wood um, I tend to use uh, oaks, ashes, uh, this one's made out of maple, um, elm sometimes, um, depending on what, what, we, what we've, we can get hold of really. Now what I tend to do is I go down to the wood yard, it's quite good, it lets me wander off in the back and I can go and pick the, the pieces of wood that I want um, and then I come back, prices it all up and I bring it home. What I will say, the wood that he does supply to me is, is always planed up to thickness. And the thickness of the wood that you really want, ideally, for a powder flask, is anything between 20 and 25 millimetres thick. Because you're doing this powder flask in two halves, if it's 20 millimetres thick, the finished product will be around 40 millimetres. And if it's 25 millimetres, obviously that's going to be 50 millimetres thick. 50 millimetres thick is quite a thick powder flask. And it depends on your hands and depends on what style that you want to make um, to, to actually find out if, 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 if 50 millimetres is going to be too wide. So really, 22 is probably ideal. Okay. So when you get your piece of wood, you've got to look for a few things. You're not too bothered much about marks on them. But um, for instance, you don't really want to be putting cracks into it. So this wood's just cracked at the end here. So you'll be discounting that area here. Turn it around to the other side where it's perhaps been sawn off. And there's a little crack there. So we'll try and avoid those cracks when we come to mark it out. Um, you also want to look at the best, the side that's best for the, um, for the finish that you want to get the grain coming out. So once again, look on both sides of the wood and the double that's got the best grain is the one that's going to be on the outside. And then what we need to do, we need to mark this wood out and um, I've been doing powder flasks now for 25 plus years. Um, so 25 plus years ago, I made these little aluminium templates. They're a little bit battered and worn now, but all these templates have all been manufacturers of powder flasks. Oh, what have you. Some have used more times than other ones, um, and others, you know, they just maybe just want to be a few of them and what have you. But I made a template for each different style. And the, the ones that are most popular is the semi-curved, the small triangular, and the small semi-curved. Okay. And then we go on to the larger curved and the largest one, which I do, which is a tr large triangular. So obviously the each of these templates... When you, when you mark out on the board here um, and you put them out, will give you different capacities of powder that you can store in your flask. So I always say, because each piece of wood's different um, and the cutting's a bit different as well, um, I always just say that that's a four ounce minimum powder flask and you might get six in it. Uh, and these two are a six ounce minimum powder flasks. Uh, and then um, an eight ounce minimum but uh, quite often you will get a hell of a lot more in than what I actually state so what you do you get your piece of wood and um, if you're starting off and I will I have to say one thing that that, that I'm a 
I was trained to be, a, a, in the initial stage, as a production engineer. And I worked in production engineering for the most of most of my wife, uh, most of my life, um, either on the production side or in the quality side. Um, I may have already spoken a little bit about this before, but so everything that I do is allied down to production. People have often asked me, "How long does it take you to make one flask?" And I'll be honest with you, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you how long it takes to make one flask because everything is done in separate batches. So, when it comes down to the wood, I will get the wood and I'll get a few different planks of wood and I'll start to get the pieces of uh, the templates out and seeing what the best I can get from this piece of wood. So, for instance, a nice triangular one there. It's not too wide, this piece here. So, I'll get, I'll get on that piece there, I'll get one. I'll get one powder flask. Or I may have to say, well, that's okay. I can get and a shorter piece a small powder flask but of course the range that I'm doing every year um, is going to incorporate all different sizes so at some point I'm going to have to to bite the bullet and, and use more than what I would normally use you know for a, for a off the piece of wood um, and also because if you if you're into um, manufacturing items in hardwood you will have offcuts and if you've got offcuts well you can use the offcuts to make to make the flask and what have you so the first thing that we'll do, as I said, I was a production engineer, so everything has to be done in batches. Um, and the batches um, are anything between sort of 20 to 50, and it depends on what material I've got. So I will never start off at the beginning of the day and say, right, I'm going to make one flask, I'm going to make one spout, I'm going to make one of these. It's all done. I've, I've done these all before. They're all been done in, in larger batches, so I can actually... When it comes to the time to finish off manufacture, I can just go to my box and I can pick out that piece and put it on the flask. Okay. The only difference is a couple of these are made to measure, which is the, the brass rod which goes across the centre, which you don't often see, uh, and the uh, the spring, and that's to, that's made to measure when you put it onto the flask. Okay. So uh, I'm going to try and zoom in on some of the bits that we've got here, and then you can actually see. Or all the engineered side of things and what so all of this side here is all manufactured by myself um, and uh, done in batches and, and this is a piece of wood which we're going to concentrate on today so what we'll do today if you won't see me manufacture any of this it's, as I say it takes too long uh, I will give you the sizes um, but we'll manufacture a piece of wood and we'll get that um, routed out or we'll get it put together we'll get it sawn we'll get it polished and then we'll start to assemble the rest of these bits onto it so you'll see all that side of it um, okay so i'll try and zoom in and then i'll point out the various bits that we've got for you let's have a look at some of the uh, the the items that we've already manufactured um, on the engineering side of this of this project um, and we'll go through each piece individually okay so this one's the bottom the bottom plug which um, fits Fits down there, a bottom house, plug housing that fits down there, and that also takes this filler plug top. So when you're filling your powder flask, all you need to do is uh, unscrew that, pour your powder in, screw back up again. Okay, make sure it's tight and what have you, and you're away to go. Um, it incorporates what they call a blowout plug. Um, this was insisted upon by by some people that I put one in. Um, but the whole flask is, is designed to sort of collapse if, in the case of an explosion and what have you. The idea, don't blow yourself up. Now this is the top catch here, which is here, and that incorporates a slider. So that slider has to go up and down like, like that. Okay, and it's got an eight to nine millimeter hole in it, so when it's shut like that, there's no hole there, and when you push it like that, there's a hole there, and the powder can come out the spring keeping the, the catch back. Okay, so that's those two items. Um, and then we've got the four different styles of, uh, of measure. And these screw into this, this top bit here. Okay, so this, this is incorporated uh, from a long time ago actually, from when I first started, well second, slightly after I first started manufacturing them. Um, people wanted different measures, so I thought, well, why don't I, I make it so you can interchange the measures? So we've got a two drum there, we've got a three drum short, a three drum long, sorry, a three drum long, 
and a four drum. So there's four four measures there, uh, of which you know if you if you've got shorter fingers, you can use a short three. Uh, if your pal if your gun's a big one and you want to put a four in, it's it's all there. Okay. So there's four different measures there. You only get one when you when you order the flask. By the way, you have to buy the rest of them. Or or, or, or I say I want one with a three drum measure. And if you want a four drum measure, then you come back to me later on. Um, then we have got uh, the, the the side panel and top face. This is this is uh, this is this bit here. Okay. Now I used to have those laser cut, um, and uh, uh, it was it, the last time I, I, I inquired. The, the, the price was quite high, and I needed to order fifty, and I didn't really need fifty at that time. I thought, well, I'll, I'm, I've got some brass. Why don't I manufacture it? I've got some brass and got some time. That's the main thing. So I manufactured this, used used as a template, scribed it all out, cut it all out, filed it all up, polished it. Okay, it took me a hell of a lot longer, but that's all been manufactured by hand, okay? And then we've got uh, two things which um, I don't actually fully manufacture uh, in batches, principally because they're, they're made to fit the flask. So we've got some quarter inch or six mil brass rod, and this is the bit that you don't see. This is the bit that goes right the way through the centre, where that screw is there. So that screw will screw into the thread at the end, um, um, and the one at the other end. So when you're tightening up these D rings, you tighten it up from both sides because it's a floating rod that goes through there. The reason for that is that I didn't want any, um, I didn't want any screws just pulling out so the, the the screw has to screw into a into a, a brass rod and the screws is usually about 20 millimeter long now what i've done the recently i've started to lock tight these screws in um to stop them from swiveling out so once, once i've tightened them up lock tighten them in so they're, they're quite safe and what have you um and then the spring which is this is a spring here and this fits on this side here and then what we do is we mark put it on mark it out where where it's it's going to be bent bend it, saw it and bend it, file it up, and it's fitted to each flask. So each flask has got their own fit. So those, all I think I do with those, and, and believe you me, this is the hardest piece of material to get hold of. Um, as you can see, everything on here is, is brass. So all these are all brass, a little bit of plastic there. Um, all the screws are, are brass, and all the pins are brass. The only thing that's ferrous is the two D-rings, and they're on opposite side to each other. Um, obvious, for obvious reasons that we don't want any sparks in the powder flask, so we don't put steel in there, um, what have you. Um, but this piece is what they call phosphor bronze, and it's phosphor bronze spring steel. Oh, sorry, it's phosphor bronze spring. And um, it used the uh, the original one came from what they call uh, what they call a doctor blade off a uh, off a paper mill. And what they used to do is the, the rollers where you dry the paper, you used to go roll, the paper used to go around these rollers. Some little bits of paper used to sort of t attach themselves to the heated roller that was dried the paper. And as it went around, it would put a dint in it. So they used to have a, dot, a blade, which is about two inches wide, 50 millimeter wide. And that would rest on the side of the, the roller. As a roller came round, it would scrape off any paper. Uh, and um, as it, as it wore, it used to go further and further down, and as it got to sort of like to a point where it was it was level, it wasn't effective enough. So they used to take them out and replace them with with the doctor blade, and I found that that doctor blade was really really good for springs. So um, I wished I had a contract to do a paper mill uh, once in my career, um, which I used to go up twice a year to do and go and do a go and refurbish a, 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 paper, a part of a paper mill, and um, it was ideal because I could get these bits. Unfortunately. Um, after a while, um, the, the paper mill decided that the doctor blades um, weren't going to be made out of phosphor bronze, they are going to be made out of, uh, of carbon fibre, <laughs> which, which put me in a bit of a panic because I couldn't really get the material then. Even trying to buy it from the doctor blade manufacturers, which I had done in the past, they were, they were saying, oh no, we, we do carbon fibre now. So I had to make sure I got the right the right grade of phosphor bronze, and and I've struggled to get this last batch, and I've managed to find some, because it could have only be manufactured um, in the spring condition when it comes straight out of the mill. You can't post heat treat this, uh, and um, I was a bit worried really. I wasn't going to be able to get more more of this stuff. In actual fact, at one point I nearly went to America for the for the for the stuff, which would have cost me a lot of money, 
but I did find some. It was a model maker's site that I got it on, and, and uh, it, was, it was quite expensive compared to getting it free from a, from a paper mill. It was quite expensive anyway. Um, but um, it, it, it does the job, and, and uh, it took me three months to get this, this last three sheets that I've got, which I've now cut up and they're ready to be assembled. And so that's the only things that aren't uh, manufactured um, in, in batches because as I said I'm a production engineer everything has to be done to, in my mind in batches to make it more cost effective um, there is no there is no real point in doing one at a time unless you're only going to make one powder flask okay so we've got the uh, all the bits are there and these are all the engineering side so the machinery which I've got which you'll see some of you don't see it all uh, in my garage uh, is, is I've got two lathes I've got a very large lathe and I've got a small model maker's lathe. I've got the uh, for the parts that I'm making this. I've got a drill press for drilling the holes in it. And each of the two lathes has got an attachment on which I can actually um, do what they call milling. So, for instance, this part here will be started off on the big lathe in square bar, and then we will drill and tap a hole straight through the centre, which is quarter BSP. There's a reason for that, mainly because it can it fits into the area and the, th the threads are right diameter and it will take the um, the 8mm or 9mm hole which goes through there so with, with a reasonable wall thickness so that was the ideal ideal size for commercially available uh, taps and dies so so we've got this now it's, it's square bar drilled and tapped a hole straight through it and then we start parting it off into into blocks about this wide um, that's, it, that's it finished on the big lathe it then goes on the small lathe where we stick it on a mandrel and we face it all up to the exact same width and when they're all the exact same width to reverse them and then we put the milling attachment on and then we start to mill the slot out rough it rough it and then finish it all the way through there so we now just we don't need a milling machine so we'll be using the lathe for the milling machine um, and then after we've done that we'll turn it back over again and we'll put this big chamfer on here or taper should we say and then it goes onto the drill press onto a drill jig which I've, which I've manufactured and then we'll drill and t drill these these holes here, and drill and counterbore these holes with a special tool that I've got for for doing that. So um, you know, there's there's two machines, three machines involved just in making making that one one piece there, um, and then these bits here. The, the the you have to be accurate. You have to be accurate with your machining. That that width there, I've got to take that that width there. Now, if that slot was smaller, I can always polish this down until it fits in so it's a nice slide fit like that also the depth of it has to be has to be controlled as well because we don't want too too deep or else you, you've got a, a gap there so it's been rocking around like this so you know point, point 0.15 is, is ideal and what have you to try and get that slide working working correctly and also working correctly when it's on top of the flask as well as you can see here okay so it, that spring pushes it, pushes it back. Okay, it's kept it short, so when you want to open it, you have to push it that way. Right, so we've, um, th these are all the engineered parts. These, you won't be seeing manufact me manufacturing any of these. Believe you me, the video would be hours and hours long. And also, I, I, I've done everything now, so um, it would mean setting up and you know, take, me, take me weeks to do it all properly. So, Okay, so all those are bits apart from um, the screws. And, um, all the pins and screws are all brass again. Um, those are all bought off the shelf items. The, the, the brass pins were, were hard to get hold of, but I manufactured to, I got a massive box full <laughs> to last me a lifetime. So all the pins are there and what have you. So everything's, everything's in brass. So we've got four screws on the bottom, two on there, two M4 screws there, and six, seven pins in it. So that's your, that's your bought out, what I call bought out finished items. So we get your piece of wood. And then we've got to make sure that we're getting the optimum um, sizes of the wood. And, and what I've done is I, I, I've picked this this piece uh, this piece as a template. Um, so we're going to make a, 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 a semi-curved flask. Okay, and this will be a six ounce flask. When I say six ounce, it's six ounce minimum. It might even it'll hold a lot more. So what we do is we put it on the on the piece of wood. And I've already done it anyway. But we'll, what we'll do is we trace around. That with a pencil going all the way around the outside and also all the way around the inside as well because this this bit here is going to be the inside of the flask so that's the form i'll be taking from the inside of the flask 
and that's around about 10 millimeter wall thickness there 10 millimeter wall thickness there, a little bit thicker there okay and we'll be we'll be believe it or not we'll be we won't be routing this out if you were doing only one of them yeah you go ahead and use your little router but if i was to try and do 50 of those with a router i'd be here forever more so we're going to be using um a lathe with a with a with a what is called an XY attachment mounted vertically, and also uh, using uh, something like an inch diameter to milling milling cutter, uh, as opposed to a, a routing cutter, and um, it's a carbide one as well, so it's quite it's quite expensive, and uh, it will be then used to cut out the centres, and you'll see that we'll do that on the, on the lathe and what have you, um, if we get the lighting right and what have you, and the position of the camera. So we've marked these out on the wood, we've avoided the cracks at the bottom here, so we've just gone a little bit further up um, and we've tried to get the optimum distance we can get these in, so that's the length of the piece of wood that you're going to require to make two part of us. What I'll do next, I'll drill two holes in here, either side of that one, and that'll become apparent to why we've done that when we go on to the next stage, which is be cutting out, cutting out the centre. Um, so what we'll do now, um, I won't show you what I'm doing because it's just, <laughs> I'm, cutting a, I'm cutting it off and drilling holes, you can, everybody can do that. So I'll do that and then we'll go on to the, the next filming stage which will be filming of the, doing one of the cutouts and I'll do the other one off camera and then we'll show you how to put them together. So by the end of this, this, this video we'll have assembled the whole of one powder flask. Okay. So this is the bit where we're going to be taking the middle of the uh, powder flask out on both halves um, and the reason for drilling the two holes in, in it was so we can clamp it to this this bit here, there's two holes there, clamping it to the XY axis here which is mounted vertical on the lathe, on the saddle of the lathe and we put a 25mm cutter inside the three jaw chuck and then we've set the stop so that that cutter will be away from this face by around about six millimeter so i'll start the machine going i'll go in now you don't have to be you got, we're going to try and follow the line on the inside but it doesn't have to be super accurate because it's only in the inside of the flask so let's see how we do i'm sorry if i get in the road of the camera but um we'll see what happens anyway So that's the inside cut out and you can see how quick that was with that 25mm cutter in there going through that. It, actually that's not the usual cutter that I use, it's a little bit uh, blunter than the one I normally use. Um, but you can see how quick that was, trying to do that with a, with a router would probably take you quite a long time. Okay, so we'll do that on the opposite one and then we'll come to cut, putting them together. Now we've glued the uh, one half to the other uh, obviously we cut down we cut this this half to the profile and then matched it up to the marked out lines on this half of the profile so what we need to do now is to cut around here all the way around it so we've got the shape of the powder flask after we've done that we'll mark out the center between there and there with a the little line and then we'll drill the 30 millimeter hole which will accept the bottom and fitting and then from that we will measure 45 millimeters on each side here drill a, um, a six millimeter hole through and I usually drill it from each side making sure the drill goes through and then we can mark out and fit this bar going across 
Now I don't normally fit the bar in at this point, but um, if I drill the holes um, whilst it's in its rough condition, when I'm sanding up, it'll take any any uh, flaws out of the uh, any 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 edge out of the hole. So um, so that's what we'll do now. So I'll get on and I'll I'll saw this out, and then we'll go to the next stage. So the holes been cut out now. All been cut out. The holes been marked out for the centre for this part here, and then we're going to be marked out the holes here and here. So we can put the bar going across there. Okay, so next thing I'll do is I'll drill these two holes ready for the bar. So we've held it in the vise and we've got a six millimeter drill inside the, dr inside the uh, drill bit inside the drill, which will perfectly match the same size as the, as the brass bar that we've got. So what you want to do is you want to get your drill, I've already pricked it, I'll prick the hole to start with, and you want to get your drill as, as much in line, as square to that as you possibly can. So it's on an angle, so just start off and then go through one half, take it out. I shook the camera then, I'm sorry. Do the other half and then what you'll do is you'll try and go through both sides which it has done if you can see there as it goes up and I'll do it again through this half here okay with a little bit of effort and a fair wind that will go all the way through and just line it up so that's nice and tight there it's just and so coming through this side here and I can then mark off on here which uh, the length I want to cut now I won't be doing that yet because I'm going to be linishing these sides off here down here uh, drilling a hole in here and linishing it, linishing it all over. So if I take any, if I measure it now, uh, and unfortunately it'll be the wrong, the wrong length. So what we'll do is we'll do that later on. We should have a nice clean hole. Okay, so the next bit is drilling down this bit here. drilled in now we'll have to make sure that we can remove the little plug as it comes in so that's discarded and now we're ready for linishing to get a nice finish all the way around just like this one here and this hole here will fit one of these if it doesn't get fitted now it gets fitted at the end so it's all been cut out it's all been it's all been drilled here, here, and what have you. And so now what we're going to do is going to clean up all the edges all the way around here on uh, on the linisher. So uh, I'll set the linisher going and then we'll get it all nicely polished up. So I'll just do a, I'll just do a little bit more off camera, uh, just to tidy it up and what have you. So uh, the bottoms are always the, the longest to take, get flat and what have you. And it's not too bad, isn't that uh, um, belt? It's pretty new. So I'll just a little bit on top here. I need to sort out as well and make sure it's all square. So um, I'll, off camera, I'll carry on, and then we'll get to the next stage. 
So we've finished it all up now, um, um, but you'll notice these edges here are quite sharp. So what we're going to do is we're going to round them over with a rounding bit in, in the router. And now normally I'd put the router in the in, in the router table, but um, it means getting it all out and setting it all up. So I thought I'll just use it for a quick demonstration, just using the router. I just clamped the handling device there. So uh, we'll just radius the edges. You'll also notice while I was finishing, I radius this edge here and this edge here. And then just put a little radius round here and round here as well on the linisher. But now we're going to do these four edges here. So here we go. So now we've got four nice rounded edges um, and then what we'll do after this we'll um, we'll start to put some more holes in so all the edges are rounded over um, ready for another sanding yet yeah, not to sand it more yet yeah. um, but now what we're going to do is we're going to put um, these three holes in here which is the two screw holes and the uh, center hole which where the powder will come out so for this you can either mark it out or you can actually do what i've done is so i've made a little little drill jig i made it years ago as i say i'm a production engineer try to do it as fast as i can and so what we'll do is just place that somewhere on center and drill the pilot holes for the screws now this is oak so we've got, i'm going to need a decent pilot hole for the screw so all i do is line it up this way like this line up somewhere near centre and then just prick the holes have a quick check that they're in line which they are and then we'll, drill, we'll transfer through and that should make the Check the um, screws go in a little bit easier. Now I normally put a little bit of wax on the screw, especially if it's old, it's that hard. And I will just see how it is. Yeah, it's not too bad. So as you can see, I'm using a a, a normal um, flat point screwdriver screw, and I'm using my hands to do it, so I can feel. The screw and what I, the last thing I want to happen is basically the screw to um, to snap off due to um, being too tight and that's okay so I can actually use this one as well same screw for that So that's that's cool. so we'll bend them around now so just get a little bit of rag on there and using a piece of brass as a dolly in there and then bend it round that curve Okay, it's not quite gone, gone flat, so two clean pieces of wood and a hammer. And there we have it, flat on there, ready for being assembled. So I'll dismantle it all now and then we'll go on to the next stage. So now we're going to put the floating, floating brass rod going through the centre. I've already put it in, so it's just shy of the end there. 
So I'll put it in there like that, just put that in the vise, mark off, take it out, ready for cutting, and we'll cut it off. Now I've already pre-drilled one end, which I tend to do. So now we're going to drill and tap this end so we can put it in the back in the in the flask. That goes to one side. Now we're going to go onto the lathe now. There is a piece now in the lathe, so what we're going to do now is we're going to drill and tap the M4 hole. So first of all, centre drill. Just make sure. With a better look, we should meet up with the hole coming through from the other side. Now we'll just face off the end, nice and square. All ready for tapping now. Well, if you can see that, there's a little taper in the end there. That's a tapped end. That's why I've got to tap. A little taper in there so it makes it easier for the screw to go in. So we're now going to tap the hole, held it, held the bar in the vise, an M4 tap. And because it's brass and it's a good tap, we can just keep going down like this. And I go as far as the, the tap will allow me to go. As I say, brass is quite forgiving, it's, you're not going to um, you're not going to break the tap. You can hear it squeaking, but that's not so that's not a problem. And we're going right. So we've gone home now where the tap can go, can go no further. And because we've drilled all the way through, when the drill got stuck, <laughs> once we've drilled all the way through, then all the all the swath from the uh, from the cutting of the of the tap of the hole, should I say, uh, has all dropped all the way through now. So I've got no. No residue in the bottom there. And once we've done that, we can fit it in. So there we go, two tapped holes. The next thing we'll do is we'll put a little screw in just as an aid. Get the flask. Have a look at lining it up there. Just line it up slightly. And all we need to do now is gently tap until we can't see the end there. That's in. And it's still shy, still shy of this end. And it's slightly in there. I can probably put it a little bit more of that. Okay. So that's in now. It's nice and tight. It's in. So I don't need to do any more with that. So everything's there and we're nearly ready to assemble except we've got to still clean up clean up this a little bit more the grit that we used on the belt sander was about 40 grit so we want to get it to a little bit smoother than that also sometimes you get a little bit of rips out on when you put the radiuses on um, and also we'll be doing something called popping the grain later on so what we'll do is i'll get the, uh, the orbital sander and we'll orbital sand all over so it's nice and smooth and what have you we'll pop the grain and then we'll start to put on the finishing coats. Now the reason why we've put all this work on here um, and this, before we actually start to, um, be, before we put the finishing coat on us is that because we don't really want to damage the, 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 the finishing coat that's, that's on, that you're going to put on by doing all the assembly work and what have you. You're still going to have to do some work on it, but at least you're doing it, you're minimising what, you, what you're doing. So the next bit will be 
um, orbital, orbital sanding and then we'll go on to the finishing. So I've gone round with the orbital, orbital sander here to up to 240 grit. Now I'm going to damp it down and uh, it's lovely and smooth now. So I'm just going to damp it down all over. And I'm going to let that dry. And as soon as you've damped it down like that, you can go on the bottom if you want, on the top. As soon as you've damped it down, you'll feel the grains have swelled up and you get, it's, it's gone back to being rough again. So as soon as that's um, dried off, I'll sand it over with a little bit of 320 wet and dry, just to take up those rough bits and smooth it out a little bit more. And then we're ready then for finishing. So I'm just going to let that dry. I'll stand it up like this. And then we're off to uh, the next bit will be the finishing. So the, the flask is now dry, um, left it overnight for to so it all dried in. So we're going to look, put a little bit of extra protection on now, we're going to put some beeswax on. So we're using uh, a Liberon beeswax here, just a small, small touch on, and then just rub it in all over. Make sure you get in the edges. And this also gives it a slightly more, more um, dull satiny finish, really. Okay, so that's done. So we'll wait now around 15 or 20 minutes until it's just dried off and then we'll give it a, a really good buffing up and then we're ready for the assembly all polished now all buffed up feels really nice nice smell to it with the uh, with the uh, beeswax so now in no particular order we're going to start to assemble so the first thing that we're going to I'd normally put in is actually the the base plate so I'll just put that on there, just line it up somewhere near, well line it up square really, and then just on the first one, just drill a pilot hole, and then we'll put the first screw in. Again, brass, brass screws here. Nicely home. And now we can <coughs> pilot drill the other three holes and put the other three screws in. Which I'll do now. all four screws in now the next thing I normally do is I normally put in one side of the d-ring so and it's always on the opposite side to where the springs going to go no particular reason for doing it this way around just a matter of it's in now so I know it's in and I've still got space on that side okay so next bit we're going to be putting the fleur de lis over the top and the top plate. So that the slides on. We'll be, 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 um, make sure it is in the right way. That's a better way. Okay. So now um, it's the top slider assembly. And the top slider, you must it must slide freely like this. It must slide freely. It also mustn't have too much clearance at the bottom here. So what we'll do, you always, always check it first, and the best way of checking it is just placing it on the top there, and then making sure it, it slides up and down like this. So if it does that, we can now assemble it.
and check again that it's, st it's still working okay just in case the, the, the wood on the top slightly bent um, the, when you manufacture the, the catch uh, when, you, when you mill out all this middle bit here they tend to bow slightly so we tend to straighten them out so that's working perfectly and then what we'll do now is we'll put the pins in each side on here just move the drill out of the way so the brass pins and the fiddly so I tend to put them in with a little pair of pliers like this put it in there So on until we do it all the way around. Now we're going to put the, the spring on. And what we need to do with the spring first, because we've got a curvature here, I tend to just bend the, the spring slightly like this. And then just offer it up to the powder flask. Put in the screw, the screws in, don't have to tighten it up, and then what we'll do is we'll transfer the line from the top of this plate here onto the spring, we can take it off. in there and now what we need to do is mark a scribe a line in line with that and scribe a other line where we're going to be cutting it so what we do we need to measure between the end face there and where the spring fits and uh, add a little bit on um, so let's see what we've got So that's about four to five mil. So if we make it six or seven mil, that'll make sure the pressure's left on. So we'll just scribe a line. Six or seven millimeters away from that one. Which would be about there. Square those two lines off. And then what we'll do, we'll cut to the top line, we'll file it up square and straight, and then we'll bend it over. So we'll cut it off, we've, um, we've filed it so it's nice and smooth on the top. So all we need to do now um, is bend that at 90 degrees. I'm going to use a little persuader with that. That's ready for the assembly. So we'll now assemble the spring on. So we just put the spring together with its D ring and just screw it home nice and tight. Square it off there so it's in line with the spring. Yes, it's working correctly. Line with the catch. Don't forget you need to do both sides of this. There's a floating bar in the middle. And just to stop this for this this spring from swiveling from side to side, we'll put a little pin in the bottom. So in the bottom. 
fingers. Working correctly. Bottom plug in. Three drum spout on the top. And there she is. One finished powder flask in oak, all brushed up, ready for sale. So, well, thank you very much um, for watching this video. Um, about making the powder flasks and what have you. I know it's quite a long video. Uh, towards the end of the video now, and this is this is the range of the flasks that I do. Um, starting with the smallest, going up to the largest. Although these three are all are all the same, all the same capacity. And I'll zoom in on each one, and then you can see, you can see what they do. Um, okay, so we've got the small curved, medium curved, large semi curved, small triangular large triangle I haven't put the top on this one yet I need to put the top on this one so I've, I thought I'd, <laughs> I'd put the top on but when I got it out of the box I haven't done um, but you can see the idea anyway okay so I'll zoom in now on each one um, I'll go through the woods as we go on to them to see which styles of wood that we've been that we've been using okay okay so this is the smallest one that we do minimum four ounces capacity um, the wood on this one is is maple Nice bit of grain here. Uh, we've got uh, a short measure on this one, short three drum measure, uh, and what have you. Everything's all the parts, all these parts are all the same, obviously. Uh, there's the other side. So that's that's your four ounce minimum capacity. And this is the one that we made uh, during the video. Uh, the material on this one is oak. Um, this is a medium sized uh, semi curved, and um, it'll hold a minimum of six ounces so here's the um, large semi-curved one and um, the wood on this one is ash um, again we've got a three drum measure on there and it'll hold a minimum of six ounces okay this is small triangular one uh, the material on this one is maple again and uh, this one will hold a minimum of six ounces of powder and the measure on this one um, is, uh, is, is a three drum long measure. Again, they're all interchangeable. And last but not least, um, this one here is a, uh, a large triangular. The wood on this one is cherry. Um, it'll hold a minimum of eight ounces. Um, I haven't put the top on this one yet, but that's, that's not a problem. We can soon put one of those on. Um, but that's, yes, that's, that's the whole range. Now they're all available from my website, the, the, the website addresses should be coming up, if not I'll put it in the, in the comments at the bottom. They're all available to buy online there um, and then hopefully that's giving you some insight of how, to, how we've been doing powder flasks for all these years. Thanks once again for watching, um, hopefully you'll be buying one or give you an inspiration into making one. Of course you don't have to put this this mechanism in the bottom you don't even have to put a bar going across there in the, the floating bar you don't even have to put the fleur de lis on it's just up to yourself all, all I would say is that it, whatever powder flask that you're going to manufacture you have to make sure that it's a safe powder flask when it's when it's hanging by your side in other words you don't want the inside of the powder flask exposed to the outside without your finger over the end so that you can stop people from any sparks from going into your powder flask and, and blowing it up. Well, thank you once again, and um, keep a look out for any other videos that we've got. Um, they're all different sort of styles of videos. I've done beer, river tables, powder flasks. There's a couple more projects I want to do. So thank you once again for watching.